A class, good morning. So this is regarding the continuation of our discussion in thermodynamics. So this is under the basic principles of thermodynamics called the pressure. What is a pressure? Okay. Pressure is force exerted by molecules in atmosphere due to gravity and temperature. Okay. So what measures this pressure? Okay. So we have manometers and barometers. So these manometers measure the pressure differential or the change in pressure between the first elevation and the second elevation. So meaning we are measuring the difference of the actual pressure and the atmospheric pressure. Another is the barometer. A barometer measures the atmospheric pressure. Okay. Another we have the Bourdon tube that also measures the pressure. So for example, a pressure vessel and any other pressure carrying uh, devices. Okay. From the figure as shown in A, we will notice that there is a two points A and B okay, at the same elevation. So meaning at these two points A and B, the pressure are equal. First, the pressure at A, at the same elevation B, they have the same uh, pressure. Okay. The barometer shown also in figure B uh, is formed by a closed tube uh, filled with liquid mercury and a small amount of mercury vapor. Okay inverted in an open container of liquid mercury. Since the pressure at points A and B also are equal, a force balance gives the atmospheric pressures. As, of course, the atmospheric pressure is the summation of the pressure of the column of the liquid and the pressure of the vapor above the uh, at the top of the barometer. Okay. So pressure also uh, is only based on a basic definition that the pressure is equal to the force acting on a certain area divided by the area, of course, uh, resisting that force. Okay. So, what are the units of pressure? Okay. In English system, we have the so-called pound per square inch. If you look at the, uh, say for example, pressure gauge, you will noti no, uh, notice that the pressure readings there are calibrated in different, uh, different units. So in English, that is calibrated in PSI, and in MKS, 
the calibration is in kilogram pores per centimeter square. But in international system of units, that is calibrated in pascals, kilopascals, or megapascals. Okay. So let us take a sample okay, of this uh, basic definition, P is equal to F over A. Okay, consider this problem. A 200-pound man has a total foot imprint area of 72 square inches. Determine the pressure this man exerts on the ground if, okay, A, he stands on both feet and B, he stands on one foot. Okay, so let us consider the first condition that the man uh, weighs 200 pounds. Okay, and the total imprint area is 72 square inches okay by just dividing the two values we get a pressure of 2.778 pound per square inch okay why pound per square inch so it is because the problem is in or is given in English system Okay, but anyway, we can change this pressure from English system to another uh, system of units or maybe to MKS or to SI units. Okay. The second condition is when the man exerts a force of on one foot only. Okay. So meaning the 72 square inches total area may be divided into two. So if we substitute that, 200 divided by uh, 72 divided by 2 is 36. So we get a pressure of 5.56 or 0.556 pound per square inch okay so this is the very basic uh, problem okay in order to apply how we, you are going to calculate the pressure based on the basic formula okay so let us go to the other pressure conversions okay so, atmospheric pressure, uh, in English system, the value is 14.7 PSI absolute. Okay. So, there are several uh, units used in pressure. So, for different countries, okay. Like, for say, for, uh, say for example, the Japanese uses the SI units. Say, United States use English units. And we have also the so-called European units used by, of course, the European countries. Okay. This 14.7 PSIA is also equivalent to 101.325 kilopascal absolute this is again equal to 1.03 kilogram per centimeter square absolute this is equal to 760 millimeter of mercury absolute okay another pressure conversion is in European standard we use the bar okay one bar is equivalent to 100 kilopascals. And we have also the 
unit of pressure which is uh, defined in tour or this is after uh, torresiles one tour is equivalent to one millimeter of mercury okay another one megapascal is equivalent to one newton per millimeter square so meaning one megapascal there is a force acting on a millimeter area or in one kilopascal we have one kilo newton per square meter meaning a force of one kilo newton is acting on a square meter area okay so this is the example of a burden tube so that measures also a pressure okay generally pressure is represented in the following terms okay so one we have the so-called atmospheric pressure okay so this atmospheric pressure of course is the measure of the the column of gases from the atmosphere okay. another is we have the so-called gauge pressure vacuum pressure and absolute pressure okay so but before that we have to let us first uh, do some exercise here okay how you are going to convert pressure reading from one unit into another unit okay so let us take this problem okay convert the following readings of pressure to kilopascal okay a 760 millimeter of mercury and b 100 psi okay we are not talking for the absolute pressure here so we are only talking the pressure conversion okay a 760 millimeter of mercury to kilopascal okay from pressure conversion in the previous slides 760 millimeter of mercury okay from pressure reading we will notice that uh, 760 millimeter of mercury is equivalent to 101.325 kilopascal that is atmospheric pressure okay so we put 760 millimeters here in order to eliminate the millimeter of mercury okay so at the numerator we have here the denominator so millimeter of mercury millimeter of mercury is cancelled out okay the equivalent of course is 101.325 kilopascal okay and for b A, we have one hundred psi to kilopascal. Okay. Knowing also that fourteen point seven psi is equivalent to one o one point three two five kilopascals, and then we get now a value of six eighty nine point three kilopascal. Okay. So, very simple, you know? Okay. So, let us go back to the terms in pressure. Absolute pressure represents the actual pressure at any given point in space. Actual pressure. Actual. Okay. Example of this is, for example, we consider an air tank. Okay. 
an air tank with a reading of zero VSI. The question now is, is the air tank empty or not? Okay, of course, that air tank is filled with air, of course. But the absolute pressure is not zero. The gauge pressure reading is zero, but the absolute pressure is not zero. The absolute pressure, of course, is the same as with the value of the atmospheric pressure. Okay. So, we will discuss this later. Okay. Another term is the gauge pressure. Gauge pressure is the difference between the absolute pressure and atmospheric pressure. So it is essentially what you would read on a pressure gauge. Okay. So it is a relative uh, measurement, of course. Okay. So let us now proceed to the pressure due to the column of liquid. Okay. Pressure is defined in the unit to uh, is, is the same uh, is equal to the unit weight of the liquid multiplied by the pressure differential between two uh, levels of water of liquid rather okay or the change of course since this is a pressure differential between two elevations so that delta p is of course defined in the unit weight multiplied by the height differential or the change in elevation between so the uh, between the two levels of of the liquid okay so what is the unit of this unit weight of course for water we have here 9.81 kilonewton per cubic meter so in mks so take note 9.81 kilonewton per cubic meter is in si units but in metric that is 1000 kilogram per cubic meter and in english units that is equivalent to 62.4 pound per cubic foot okay Okay, so let us consider a problem again in calculating the change in pressure between two points. Okay, so the barometer of a mountain hiker reads 31 or 30 rather, 0.150 inches of mercury absolute. That is at the beginning of hiking trip and 28.607 inches of mercury absolute at the end neglecting the effect of altitude on local gravitational acceleration determine the vertical distance climb assume air density was 0 0.075 pound per cubic foot okay solution so the change in pressure delta p is equal to the unit weight of the fluid multiplied by the change in elevation okay so rearranging the equation we have delta p or divided by the unit weight that is equal to the change in 
elevation. Okay, so we have already given the pressures, of course, at the beginning of the trip and at the end. So that is 32 and 15 and 28.607. Okay, subtracting these two pressures now. And then changing this unit to make the units to be substitu substituted consistent. Okay, so we have to change this numerator into pound per square foot unit. Okay, finally, we change or we got the change in elevation as for. 1555.5 or 1455.5 feet. So that is the elevation traveled by the mountain hiker. Okay. So that is the, of course, the highest uh, elevation reached by the mountain hiker. Okay. Okay, next. We have the presentation of gauge pressure, absolute and vacuum pressure. Okay. So, we will notice that at this level, the pressure is atmospheric. Okay. So, let as now, considering this red arrow, so this is the actual pressure reading. Okay. So this is the sum, of course, of the gauge pressure reading here, the green arrow, and the atmospheric pressure, the blue arrow. Okay. So, absolute pressure here is above the atmospheric pressure. So, but there is also an absolute pressure below the atmospheric pressure. So, let us consider this arrow here. So, this is the absolute pressure and the green arrow is the pressure below the atmospheric pressure or we call that as a vacuum pressure so anyway the definition of the absolute pressure is just simply equal to the atmospheric pressure plus the gauge pressure and for an absolute pressure below atmospheric pressure that is absolute pressure equals to P atmospheric minus the P vacuum or vacuum pressure. Okay. So let us again take another example. A 51 cubic feet tank contains 3 pounds of e gas at 8 80 degree Fahrenheit and a vacuum pressure of 24 inches of mercury. The question is, what is the absolute pressure in PSI absolute and pound per square foot absolute? Okay. So, substituting the values, we have the atmospheric pressure which is equivalent to 29.92 this is constant minus twenty four inches of mercury vacuum okay so the difference of course is the absolute pressure which is equivalent to five point ninety two inches of mercury okay so let us now change this to P is I absolute. So, again, from the pressure conversions, 
5.92 inches of mercury absolute multiplied by again the atmospheric pressure equivalent to 29.92 inches of mercury as to 14.7 psi absolute okay the equivalent now is 2.91 psi absolute okay changing G this to pound per square foot absolute okay so simply by just multiplying this by 124 square inches in one square foot so the equivalent now is 4188 pound per square foot okay another example a 30 meter vertical column of fluid density of 1878 kilogram per cubic meter is located where the gravitational acceleration is 9.65 meter per second square find the pressure at the base of the column okay so this is a hydrostatic pressure again where the pressure is also defined in terms of the unit weight and the change in elevation so which is 30 meters okay so sa direct substitution pressure multiplied by uh, is equals to 1,278 kilogram per cubic meter multiplied by 9.65 meter per second multiplied by the change in elevation which is 30 meters divided by 1000 to make it kilopascal so the equivalent value of the pressure at the base of the column of course is 543.7 kilopascal okay So that's all. So we have here an activity. So where you are going to uh, solve and submit. We have quiz number three. So we have different uh, problems here applying how you are going to compute the pressure on a certain uh, location, of course. So we have another, we have here an assignment, of course, this is the continuation of your uh, previous assignments to uh, make it familiarize, of course, or master how you are going to change from one unit of pressure into another, or you master how you are going to solve prob problems okay, at different applications okay class thank you very much okay